To ensure that the tool is very functional to deliver its job, it must be ensured that the tool is effectively designed to be able to be efficient and deliver its job effectively. And today, we'll be looking at um, Rollercom bits and how they are designed to ensure that they are very functional and efficient in drilling operations. Good day, everyone. My name is Ugo Koli. Today, once again, we'll be looking at drill bits and specifically roller cone bits and how they are designed so getting right into the meat of it just hold on a second we will be the course outline is as follows we'll be looking at the roller cone bits the components of the roller cone bits we'll be looking at the types of bearing and that they have we'll be looking at the roller cone, sorry, the roller cone bearings and uh, the load distribution that is actually one of the kind of bearings we have that's the roller bearing we'll be looking at the friction bearings and how they are designed and of course their load distribution then we'll be looking at the how the formation responds to the weight on bit based or I mean as per the design of the roller cone bit. And we'll also be looking at what's on the RPM, that's how the form how drilling operations, how the rate of penetration responds to the RPM as well. So on this slide, we'll be looking at the roller cone bits, the components of the roller cone bit. So looking at the pictures from left to right. Here you have the API pin, here you have the leg, the shirt tail, the nozzle boss, the nozzle, and the cone. So right up here, you have the lubricant reservoir. If you blow that up here, you see the lubricant reservoir here. The cover is over here. Then you have the lubricant cover here. That's moving all the way to the, to the right. Then that's the lubricant pathway where it goes down to lubricate the ball bearings and the seals. Move right to the middle, to the middle picture, you have your tungsten carbide hard facing here that prevents the formation from eroding the, the 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 big gauge then you have your outer row gauge right here with the cutting structure and then you have the inner part of it so this is the outer this is the inner lubricant reservoir the tungsten carbide hard facing then the inner row cutting mm -hmm. then moving in here you have the primer inner bearing sorry the prim the secondary inner bearing and the primer outer bearing that help them um, for the rotation of the, of the roller cones so what kind of bearing types do we have to from the left you have the roller cone bearing. Typically, we use them for very large drill bit sizes. That's from the 12 and quarter larger, I mean, to larger sizes. Then they also refer to anti friction bearings. So, you, from your 12 and quarter to the 17 and a half to the 20, 20, 24 and a half inch bits, you would expect to see roller cone bearings. Then, for the friction bearings, um, for bits that are 12 and quarter, you will expect to see friction bearings there. And they also refer to as journal bearings. So this is pretty much what they look like inside. And um, these are the components which we will be looking at in, in, in consequence slides as we as we progress. So this is these are the components of the ruler of the of the roller bearing. From up here, you have the bearing here, you have the seals, then you have the rollers, then you have the ball bearings that help um, the rollers, then you have the thrust washers, then you have the rollers, and another set of rollers, then you have the thrust plug. So this is this are, this is blowing out the roller cone bearing. These are the components that you will expect to see in the roller cone bearing. When you drill with the roller cone bits with roller bearings and you apply load from the top, from these arrows you can see clearly that where you expect to see the highest applied load is directly opposite the the drill string. So it's expected that when you apply load from the top you expect to get the highest response right here directly opposite the, the where you are applying the the, the load from so it it's clearly says here it has the higher the highest endpoint loading more reliable bearing capacity at high rpm so with the roller cone bits with roller bearings we expect it to be most durable with very high rpm that's actually why um, um, sometimes it's chosen so if you're expecting to spin the bit a lot more when drilling that formation maybe perhaps you have a, a very high inclined well you're going to be drilling with the roller cone bit and you expect to spin a lot that means you should consider choosing the, the roller cone bit with roller bearings also if you expect to perhaps want to apply more weight on bit and get a response perhaps a very hard abrasive formation below you you expect um i mean to think about choosing the roller cone bit and roller bearings for the friction bearings, these are, these are what friction bearing looks like when you explode it. You have the bearing here, you have the seals, you have the bearing sleeve, the ball bearings, the thrust washer, and the thrust cap. 
So this is pretty much what the friction bearing looks like. And for the friction bearing, you see that all these arrows clearly look equal. So what it tells you is that when you apply load from the top, you expect to have even load distribution across the, the bearings. So what does this mean? It means that when you put load from the top, all the bearings would sort of receive the same load. And how does this help this bit? You see that you would agree with me that because of this even distribution, this uh, friction bearing is more likely to last longer. When you compare with a bit that when you apply load and you're getting the same response from directly um, directly under it, and meanwhile you're not getting the same, you're not getting equivalent response on the side, you will agree with me that that bearing is going to damage quicker. But when you have when you're applying the load for when you're applying load to a particular bit, when you apply load to a particular bit, and you are getting equivalent your equivalent response across every facet of the bearing, you would expect this bit to last longer and that's why you see here he has higher load capability this is because it's able to distribute that load accordingly and it has even load distribution so looking at how this bit responds to weight on bit you can see here uh, let's just read this out quickly it says as the bit increases the rate of penetration increases to a point so what are we saying weight on bit is very very useful for increasing rate of penetration however there comes a particular point where no matter the amount of weight on bit that you apply, you don't expect to have a significant increase in weight in rate of penetration. So that's pretty much what this chart tells us. On the x-axis, we have the weight on bit. On the y-axis, you have the ROP. You see here that as you keep increasing the weight on bit, it increases. At this point, there's a huge jump. And this, still, this is where your weight on bit is most useful. There's a huge jump up here and you begin to see very high increase in your rate of penetration but at this point you see that you keep increasing weight on bit and the magnitude of the weight of bit keeps increasing but if you look here you see that the magnitude of the rate of penetration is not really I mean, not, the magnitude is not really high there's an increase but i mean you pretty much look at this and it looks like a straight line so that's what this diagram is telling us so that's why the drill out test is actually very important when you want to start drilling to be able to optimally choose what weight on bit and rpm that you will want to drill that particular whole section with that passes on this information to us and lets us and uh, kind of advises us what to go with and so same as the, the rpm the revolutions per minute kind of tells you at what point this chart tells us how quick we how the response to um, the rate of penetration when we rotate the pipe. So on this chart, on the on the y-axis, you see the ROP. On the x-axis, you see the RPM. You will notice that as we increase the RPM, we get subsequent increase in rate of penetration. But at some point, at this point, you see that no matter the RPM, how much we try to increase that revolutions per minute, uh, the ROP does not increase further. So it increases, but gets to a point and it stays still. So thank you very much, everyone, for listening to this topic. We'll go ahead to speak about other components of the roller cone bits and how they are designed. We'll also talk about PDC bits and how they are designed and how these components affect their efficiency. And we'll also go to talk extensively about how these bits graded post drilling operations. Once again, thanks for following this video all the way to the end. Please do not forget to share like and subscribe see you on the consequent videos bye for now